Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm gonna to react to an SAS operator smoked some Nairobi insurgents. Now this video is by Popo Medic and love his channel. I reacted to um, uh, uh, army rangers smoking some crips in LA. That was like a few weeks back and it was such an interesting story. It sounded like a movie, really and truly, it sounded like a movie that someone like Clint Eastwood would be in or something like that. Like. I'm surprised it has not been optioned or anything like that. And I'm hoping this story here is because it's got the SAS, you know, the, the British Special Forces. These guys are the most badass guys ever. Like the stuff that they do is insane. So I'm sure this story is going to be fun to listen to and watch. So let's do it. Tuesday, January 15th, 2019. A British SAS operator on a mission to train local Kenyan Defense Forces quickly found himself in the middle of a two day siege at the luxury Doucette D2 complex in Nairobi. The five gunmen unleashed fury as hundreds of innocent civilians ran for their lives. But not before the solo operator grabbed his weapon and his kit and stormed in, self-initiating an off-duty rescue mission. And after a 19 hour game of cat and mouse, the lone operator saved hundreds of lives and took the lives of the enemy. By himself. Badass. I mean, if there was two of them, you could kind of think one of them could, you know, flank the other one, but by himself. In 2019 alone, there were over six terrorist attacks in Kenya. And over the last several decades, terrorism in Kenya has run rampant throughout. From the 1975 Nairobi bombing to the 2013 Westgate Mall incident. And since its creation in 1895, East Africa has been at the nexus of several political disputes that revolve around the political conflicts of the Middle East. As Kenya has remained an ally of Western governments and is host to several sensitive Western interests, including US and British military bases. And with poverty, weak borders, corrupt or incompetent police, and the rapid rise of extremist groups, Kenya and other African nations have quickly become hotbeds and easy targets for global terrorists. And the Kenyan army has yet to contain the influx of terrorism. It's honestly sad how much corruption that there is in, um, there's corruption in politics in every country, but in Africa, that is just rampant, like Nigeria, where, you know, ethnically I'm from, it's just, it's just ridiculous the amount of corruption you get to the airport people are you know on you immediately trying to get money out of you it's just uh it's insane moving in from somalia and sadly too many kenyan soldiers have died trying At the forefront of Kenya's counterterrorism efforts are the Kenyan Defense Forces' well-armed and well-trained Special Operations Forces. The Kenyan Special Operations Regiment, the 30th Special Forces Battalion, and the 40th Ranger Strike Force, who have all received their training from both U.S. and British Military Special Operations Command, such as the U.S. Army's highly capable Green Berets and the United Kingdom's ultra-secretive Special Air Service. And in January of 2019, an SAS team was sent out to do just that. Here we go. This guy's really good at setting the mood, isn't he? Amongst the SAS team was a team member by the name of Christian Craighead. A seasoned operator who first joined the British Army at 16 years old in 1992. He began his career as a junior paratrooper before coming of age and moving onward to the paratrooper regiment, which for comparison to the United States, a, a British paratrooper is, is the same thing as an army ranger. After serving three years as a paratrooper, Craighead then joined the Pathfinders, which again, for US comparison, it's like, it's like Marsoc. He deployed with the Pathfinders to Iraq during the 2003 invasion of Iraq, where he led 
reconnaissance missions. And around nine years later, he attended and completed the SAS's notorious six-month-long selection program and joined the SAS regiment. People have died on this uh, selection process, by the way. It's, it's insane. And in true SAS fashion, the rest of his history is lost and remains untold, as the ethics of the Special Air Service are true to form of the phrase, the quiet professionals. But the SAS's legendary exploits over the years have often superseded their efforts of secrecy. The end came with an assault on the building by the Army Special Air Services Regiment, the SAS. And at the tip of their spear lies the 22nd SAS Regiment, the Special Air Services Tier 1 unit, of which Craighead belonged. And when his seemingly peaceful training mission in Kenya took an unpredictable turn, Craighead delivered the gunman an unpredictable turn of his own. And on the afternoon of January 19th, at approximately 3 p.m., at the Five Star Deuce at D2 Hotel Complex, as guests were having lunch and shopping around, five Kenyan nationals of non-Somali descent were moments away from executing a calculated attack. The terrorist cell had traveled to the complex from their home base located in Somalia. Armed with AK-47s, hand grenades, and an IED, the men staged outside of the complex. The 14 Riverside Complex in its entirety is one of East Africa's largest and more upscale developments, consisting of banks, restaurants, executive offices, and the hotel itself. A stage with stark contrast to the barbaric attack that was soon to unfold. At approximately 3.30 p.m., one of the insurgents breaks off on his own and enters the complex, where he locates and fronts the outdoor patio of the lively lunchtime rush of the Secret Garden restaurant. Shouting aloud in Swahili, before committing to the first phase of the attack and blowing himself up. Oh my God. He blew himself up. I mean, the kind of mentality to be able to do something like that, you've got to be like radicalized or something. Once the explosion was heard, the four men began their assault where they engaged two Kenyan police officers guarding the gate. The men then threw hand grenades at three unattended parked cars, setting phase two of the attack into motion. Two explosions to create panic and confusion. The four men then entered the complex and split up into two groups as they made their way to the first office block and began shooting and throwing grenades inside. And at this point, everyone is trying to escape and call for help by any means necessary. Man, I'd be so scared. You'd be so scared. Oh my God. If I die, I love the Lord and, and believe I'll go to heaven. Please tell my family I love them. Oh my God. members of private security forces and armed individuals, along with some off-duty police officers, were some of the first to respond. At which time, an unknown person present at the complex picked up his phone and called his friend, Christian Craighead. He answered the phone and could hear the sound of gunfire coming from the background. The man requested for Craighead's assistance at the complex. Wow. He grabbed his gear and jumped in his truck, Just like dodging that. in and out of traffic and arriving on scene only moments later. He had little to no intel on what was specifically taking place, but the sound of automatic gunfire was evident. Wearing a balaclava, body armor, and freaking Armani jeans. Uh, this dude's 007. And he's also got a black rifle coffee block beer patch. Craighead armed himself with a Glock 17, a combat knife, and a suppressed Amako C8 carbine rifle. And without orders, relying only on his elite training and battle-proven instincts, the SAS operator went rogue and mobilized himself. And just like that, Obi-Wan Nairobi was born. <laughs> Obi-Wan. <laughs> the music, A1. Craighead could be seen escorting dozens of civilians out of the complex and even carrying out the wounded. And with each pull, he turned around and went right back in and did it again. Wow. The locals were in awe 
of a masked foreigner who appeared to be single-handedly taking control of the situation wherever he could. You've got to be so confident in your abilities to It do wasn't that. long until reinforcements showed up. As police and other Kenyan forces responded to the scene, Kenyan soldiers and police established a perimeter around the complex. Craighead embedded with a group of the soldiers and moved through the complex to continue rescuing employees and guests who were still pinned down within. And footage from the event even shows him leaving those forces behind and taking matters into his own hands to directly engage the enemy. And while clearing buildings and sweeping the courtyards, Craighead located the terrorists and swiftly engaged the enemy, single-handedly killing two of them. If a man plays the fool, then it's only fools he'll persuade, but appear to be the devil and all men will submit. Gunfire altogether had seized, and authorities and Craighead alike began to clear the rest of the complex, as the actual number of attackers was unknown. At is that him? I mean, I'm surprised that his identity has been revealed like this. Maybe his name isn't actually, you know, Craighead. I'm guessing they've changed his name. This time, he assisted with coordinating logistics with local Kenyan authorities, went room to room searching for remaining attackers, and provided remaining civilians with a safe escort to the outside perimeter of the complex. While it had been thought that the threat had been neutralized, after a few hours, gunfire and explosions were again heard in the early hours on January 16th. My God. As Kenyan police located the remaining two gunmen in a hotel room, and after engaging the men, the Kenyan police apprehended the wounded suspects. And by 11.48 p.m., the Kenyan government announced that the 14 Riverside Complex had officially been secured. Man, so tense though. That time that all this went down. He hopefully got like an award of bravery for this because he was by himself for a lot of the time. Twenty Kenyan citizens, an American and a British South African man, died during the attack. Oh my god, that many! The terror group Al-Shabaab issued a statement claiming the attack was coordinated with the assistance of Al-Qaeda as retaliation for the relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Israel. Christian Craighead was awarded a conspicuous gallantry cross for ending the 19-hour siege, which is the second highest honor in the United Kingdom. His heroic actions saved hundreds of lives, and he retired from the SAS in 2020. He wrote a book about the event titled One Man In that is currently pending approval from the Ministry of Defense. Wow. Impressive. Very impressive. Hey guys, question. if you enjoyed this video. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Like, what a story. Imagine the kind of mentality, you know, it takes for you to just turn up somewhere that's been taken over by, by terrorists and just go straight in. I mean, you've got to have such confidence, such courage, like no fear almost, or you're just in complete mastery of that fear. It's a, it's a crazy special mindset. I wish I could, you know, like I'm pretty brave, but not like that. I mean, <laughs> maybe if I had the training, the, the decades of experience that he must have accumulated to that point, just to go in there by yourself. There's probably dozens of insurgents. Just, it's mad. It really is crazy. Really great story. Like, I'm, I'm probably gonna get his book, uh, Christian's book, and just read it because, yeah, that's incredible. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.